Okay, guys, I'm going to try this. Please understand I'm left-handed and I've never done this and this may screw up, but here goes. Okay, um, so in each one of the problems, electrolytic cell problems, we are dealing with a um, an electrolytic solution, all right? In problem number one, the solution is copper chloride. So the two ions are copper and chloride. Okay, now um, what's going to end up happening with this is that the water, because it's in solution, is also possibly, could be possibly oxidized and um, reduced. So again, what I said the other day was you put the cation over the cathode, you put the anion, which is the chlorine, over the anode. All right. So once you've done this, we know that either the water or the cation are going to be um, reduced, and either the anion or water are going to be oxidized. This is where then you look at this thing, okay? And if you look at the bottom side, which of course the cathode is being reduced. So if it's being reduced, it's an oxidizing agent. So we're looking at it over down at, at this end, okay? And what we're looking for is as long as it is above this line, it will it will oxidize or it will reduce rather than water. Anything down here water reduces instead of those materials. That's that over potential thing. Okay? So here's your water, which fits right in there for this case. But if you find copper, you'll find that copper is way up. No, it's not that one. It's the next one. Here it is. It's right there. And the value is 3.4 as compared to waters, um, basically negative zero point, and it's like it right at 8.3 here. All right, so you want the most positive one. Well, that would be the copper. So that says that this is going to be responsible for the reduction cat, um, reduction half reaction. So what do we do? We write that down. We write Cu2 plus plus 2E yields Cu, and the value is plus 0 0.34. All right, now we got to do the same thing over here, and this is problem number one for the chlorine versus the water and we should be getting used to this one because now we're talking about these are being oxidized so we're now on this side of the thing and we're looking for the over potential effect here again is your water that fits in right there so anything this way is going to be oxidized these up here water is going to be a better oxidizing material because it's a better reducing agent. So chlorine is right there. So that means the chlorine is going to be the thing that is oxidized for this first one. And um, because we're going backwards, we're going to do chlorine, and the formula is chlorine um, gets chlorine gas and two electrons. But we've got to go, because we're going the backwards, we've got to go with the negative 1.34, which is the volts. Okay? Um, I think you guys can combine the two of those reactions into a single reaction. But what we find out is then we end up um, 0.34. I was at, sorry, it was a 6. Um, it's negative 1.02 volts. All right. What this says is that the minimum battery size has got to provide this many volts and it's got to go in the opposite. So, and it was one of the questions we'd had. So the battery has to be a 1.2 volt battery um, to, to, to work. And that's the first one. Okay, 
So that's, that's the first one. All right, in the second problem, um, our electrolyte is sodium and sulfate. Now, the epiphany that I had is that it's something that I've read about, but I've not really talked to you guys about, is sometimes what we have is a non-reacting electrolyte. Now, we don't know that yet, but that's what we're going to find out. This is the basic reaction that is going to be used in a Hoffman apparatus, which would, which would um, do water electrolysis, which would mean taking water and breaking it back into hydrogen and oxygen. And I've got the apparatus, and we're going to do it in class. Um, I'm excited about that. And it's just something I figured out. Okay, so here's this. But again, it's aqueous, so water can be a factor. Cation goes to the cathode, or water goes. Um, and we have sulfate, which is the anion, can go to the anode, or water goes. We got one of those two things. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at the, the thing. In this particular case, again, we're looking at this side down here for the sodium versus water, but notice there's your water, again, not here, but there's sodium. So since sodium is below this, we're saying that the water is a really, really weak oxidizer, so that means it's going to be reduced. So a weak oxidizer is easily reduced because, look, strength of reducing agent over here means that these things are very easily um, so anyway water's water's gonna be reduced so sodium doesn't happen and water does happen so the reaction then is that reaction which is that one from I don't like it sorry plus 2e yields H2 gas plus two OHs. Now, the one thing that I wasn't sure about is which one of the numbers did we use? Do we use this point ne negative four one, or do we use the point eight three? And I did some research tonight, and we used this regular one because it falls in. So, so it's got a, and you wouldn't have known that yet. Negative zero point eight three. Can you still see that on there? Yep. Okay. All right, um, so that's what happens at the cathode. At the anode, we're now going to be looking at water and SO4. Um, and SO4, because now we're on this side, okay, because we know that it's being oxidized, which means the, you know, it's a reducing agent, because um, a reducing agent is oxidized. So the stronger the reducing agent, all right. Um, anyway, when we look up here, here's sulfate. Sulfate is that thing, it's above this. So again, water is going to be oxidized as compared to any of these things up here. So while it seems weird, water is going to be both oxidized and reduced. Obviously the H plus is what's being done here when we talk about the reduction. Um, no, that's the reduction, sorry, the oxidation. The oxidation is going to be the, the oxygen. So we've got another water equation. And that water equation here is, um, we start again with water. And it's H2O yields one half O2 as a gas plus two H pluses plus two E's. All right, well, we can't have a half, so let's just double that up. Um, and that is the value of that one is the original value. Where's one point? Where's water up here? Not the overpotential water, but that one. Oh, sorry. Not the overpotential, but the other water right there, which is um, plus 1.3, which is a negative 1.23.